Hey, hey, hey. Tav had the out of this world story from our space. Sooner or later, cheaters always come back. And when they do, you have to be ready to show them exactly what they're missing and exactly what they're getting back. Today on our space, let's rub it in their faces. Up first, a cheater attracted to the dollar signs. Tough month since D-Day. First glimmer of hope, and then she reaches out again. Here's my story. My, 39 male, wife, 36 female, began working with a man I will describe as a prominent figure in her industry about a year ago. I could tell she was a little dazzled by his high profile, but I never imagined she would cheat with, well, anyone, but definitely not a gosh darn 70-year-old man. Her finding out, her friend tested me, suspicions, and I found proof in her phone. It was the most surreal and worst moment of my life. It went on for about three months, and I never even noticed anything. We have been together for 14 years, married for seven, and have been happy for the most part. She was very remorseful and claims to have been caught up with the attention of someone she admired. Apparently, he does this with women in his professional orbit fairly often. She made a lot of promises, but I knew from the beginning reconciliation would not be an option. We don't have kids, so that's at least one nightmare avoided. She agreed to move out if she got to keep her dog, which hurts, but I had to admit he would miss her more. Divorce still in process, but shouldn't be too tumultuous. Very limited contact. She claims to be heartbroken, but isn't pushing anything. I have supportive friends and family, though I haven't given them the details. The dust is settling, I guess, but I can barely function. I spend at least half the day in a rage. I feel so humiliated and disgusted, not just that she had an affair, but that her partner is like twice our age. It's so bizarre and makes me feel so worthless that she wanted him more than me. I can't stand the idea that nothing in his life has changed and I can't do anything about it. I'm playing on getting therapy. I want to say something about exposing this person affair because I have a lot of advice on it elsewhere. All I have is screenshots of a text conversation between my wife and this person, who was stored in her phone under a pseudonym and her verbally admitting it was him. No real evidence, no chance of corroboration from my ex or the person who advised me to look for evidence. This man is very wealthy and highly esteemed. Going after him with virtually nothing and no one to back me up would almost certainly mess my life up more than his. He is not my wife's boss, nor is he a member of her company. He sometimes works in conjunction with her company. So other than the scandal, I don't know if anyone could get in any trouble anyway. I'm trying to focus on me. Talking about this with people on here the past couple of days has helped. I even made plans tonight. But then I got the dreaded Facebook message from the ex. She's now claiming she lied to her fair partner that we were in an open marriage. So even when she's supposedly pouring her heart out, it's to protect him. I stopped reading. I feel like canceling my plans, but I'm going to at least go through the motions, I guess. I'm wondering if contact with the ex is in your best interest, OP. Sometimes people need a clean break. I feel like maybe remaining in contact might mean we're choosing to stay in the past and not move forward. Update. People have been warning me, and I guess it's true. Situation is in my post history. My ex left quietly when asked and has been amicable during the divorce process. I cut all contact except through lawyers. I've had a lot of people here and in real life warn me that she would try and get me back. It didn't seem like the case, but lo oh and behold, get the letter in the mail today. How sorry she is. What a stupid mistake she made. Begging to come home. She'll do anything. Of course, that's the case now. Told her family what happened and she got kicked out of her sister's house. I've heard it's over with a fair partner. She took a leave from her fancy job that she fought so hard for. She's trawling back because she has nothing without me now. I won't feel bad for her. I feel such deep sadness for what we lost over this, but good old reliable anger and disgust are keeping me from ever responding. I'm, very casually, seeing someone, looking into moving closer to family when this is all over. Finally made a therapy appointment. It's still hard every day, but I will never take her back. Let's see what some of the community has to say. Maximum sort 4814 says, She's sorry, she made a mistake, she'll do anything. What is the medium of exchange which squares up that level of betrayal, disloyalty, and deceit? Is there some prescribed number of scented candles? Some set number of ritual dances? Food offerings? Sex acts? If you can't exchange value for value, then what could they possibly imagine they'd be offering? Dry assistant Stendu196 wants to say, 
Her fantasy life of rainbows, unicorns, and living happily ever after fell apart. This is all too common. She looks back on the stable, comfortable life she had with you and wants to try to undo her disastrous decisions and actions. She sees you as the fallback plan. She's had her fun and now wants her old life back. She'll do anything. Unfortunately, there's nothing she can do that will completely undo the damage and the fact that she can't be trusted. If you take her back, your future will be living with a partner who has betrayed you and can't be trusted. There be dragons. Oh boy, yeah, you hit the nail on the head, OP. The only reason she wants to come back is because she has nothing. It seems like she didn't have a problem cheating or leaving you while she apparently had it all. She thought it would be sunshine and lollipops on the other side, getting all comfy and cozy with an older man who may have swooned her with big dreams and dollar bills, but it never works out that way. She was definitely living in a fantasy world. Stick to your guns, OP. Clearly, she prioritizes a material life over a loyal partner. What do you think? Next up, a man-child kicked out of the crib and a life gained. Getting cheated on and getting a divorce made me realize how much I was missing from life. 24 February 2023 I, 33 female, just wanted to share this with everyone who's going through a divorce or a heartbreak for a similar reason. I married someone who I loved with all my heart. We met in college and right after graduation we got married. I decided to stay home because my husband, 34 male, made a lot of money. I gave him everything, supported his business, cooked for him, cleaned for him, basically babied him a lot because I was in love with him. I thought if I was a good wife and nurtured him, he would love me back. And for like five years, it was good. I discovered he was cheating on me when I found a random receipt from a hotel. I investigated a little and found out he was in fact cheating on me. And his affair partner was my best friend Kylie, 31 female. I was betrayed by two of my closest people. Kylie gave me a vague excuse that she didn't want to hurt me, but she just fell in love with him. His excuse was, you do not make me feel special anymore. You have just got boring and let yourself go. I agree I was a little chubby back then because of my medicines. Also, I was always too tired to work out. I tried the path of reconciliation but failed. He left me for Kylie. The whole incident made me realize who are my real friends and who are fake ones. There were people who are neutral, but only two of them. Josh and Marie were on my side and cut off Kylie. I was really devastated. I felt like, without him, I was a no one. I lost my husband, my best friend, my house, my life. I stayed with Marie for a while. She offered me a small job in her catering business. I love food. When I was married, I would make different varieties of food for my ex-husband. Cooking was just very therapeutic to me. During that time, Marie's mom gave me some useful advice. That is, an average human lives for 75 years. You're already 27. Are you that stupid that you want to waste the rest of your life being sad over men who never loved you? That thing really stuck with me. I have trust issues because of my husband's infidelity. I had trouble dating, so I skipped it for a while. I focused on working on myself. I socialized with a lot of people while I was catering and made a lot of connections. I always wanted to start a business of my own. And since I loved creating food, a customer I was catering for actually gave me an idea to start a baking business. My friends also helped me a lot. I built a pretty small yet successful baking business within a couple of years. I started to feel more of myself now that I am free. I didn't realize I had so much free time in my hands because I wasn't busy taking care of a large human. My house was clean. No one is putting dirty laundry on the floor. No one is telling me to make something else because they are not in the mood for a certain ditch. Nobody puts dirty dishes in the sink. I started to embrace this solidarity. I know those things I have mentioned are not something that is big, but it was a huge relief. Moreover, no one questions me whenever I go out. I don't have to answer to anyone before going out. I can spontaneously go on a long drive and I'll have to ask for permission. I learn a new language with my free time. I focus more on family and friends who genuinely love me. And getting dumped has made me see the red flags I missed in my marriage. I used that as a lesson to steer clear of any trash men in my life. I dated a few men, but they didn't seem nice to me. But it didn't bother me a lot. I'm happy being single and carefree. I see my divorce as a blessing to me rather than a curse. I do feel alone sometimes, but I recently got a call from Kylie saying that she regrets marrying my ex because he never appreciates her and always puts the burden of everything on her. They have two kids now, but my ex doesn't help with any chores. She's always tired and exhausted after taking care of two kids and an adult. It just made me realize that it would have been me if my husband didn't cheat on me with Kylie. I simply told her, well, you said you loved him, so he is your problem now. What's the point of coming to me? That witch has the audacity to say she wanted a friend. 
I blocked her number. I don't want to be in their lives. Sometimes I feel like I missed my prime because I'm now 33. It feels too old to start over. But I still have hope for love one day. I'm currently dating a guy who's also divorced, like me, because his wife cheated on him. So we will see how that goes. Wow. I'm so sorry, OP. First of all, Marie's mom is wholly right. Don't wish your life living for someone else. Secondly, the fact that you have all this free time is beautiful. You don't have to look after a man baby anymore. And you're right. It could have easily been you married with two kids to an ungrateful husband. You got out at the right time. My ex-best friend, who married my ex-husband, hired me to make a cake for her son's birth. 20 February 2023. I, 33 female, am in a bit of a dilemma. You see, my ex-best friend, 31 female, had an affair with my ex-husband, 34 male, when we were married. Our friendship fell apart right over there. I didn't have any contact with her until a month ago. She called me and said she is not happy with her life. I have moved all with my life. I don't need their shenanigans. I run a small baking business. It is relatively new. I only take orders for cakes on occasions like birthdays, graduation or reunion, except for weddings. I have some plans to expand it and also have a dream to open a bakery of my own one day. A few days ago, I get an order from my ex-best friend. She wanted me to make desserts for her son's first birthday. And she doesn't just want me to make a birthday cake. She also wants a dessert section in the birthday party. It is a huge order and the pay is good. It will be good for my business. But as you can see, she and I have a history. This made me question, why does she want me to do it? My ex comes from a well-to-do family. He also has a high-paying job. She could easily hire the best baker in town. Why does she want me to do it? My business is not that big. It made me feel like she's trying to grab my attention. Or just trying to sabotage my business. Or maybe she wants to talk to me after I shunned her the last time. On the other hand, the businesswoman inside me says to take it. I know I can do it. The party is huge. There will be many people from affluent backgrounds. I can promote my business to those people. It will boost my revenue as well. I'm thinking if I just avoid her as much as possible, then it will be good. But I don't know. I am stuck in between. I need some good advice. Here's some advice from the comments. Take it. Make them the best cake you can. Show them that you're not bothered by either of them. The best payback is no payback. The OP replies, Hey, at least this way, I will get some money considering I wasted my 20s on an ungrateful man-child. I wonder if she's trying to annoy her husband. Just a thought. Maybe she's trying to do a good thing. The OP says, I talked to a friend of mine about it after I got the order. She's in a catering business too. She said that maybe my ex-best friend just wants to compensate for what she has done to me, like a charity. I don't think there's a strong case not to do it. As you say, the money is good. The opportunity is great. If you're serious about your business, you take the opportunities when they come. The alternative is wondering what might have been. If you don't take this order and that doesn't sound like you. The question is, how much contact to have with this person? You can reach out, speak on the day, or just make the order and keep your distance. That side of things is completely up to you. The customer is always right about the product, quality, and service, but you are fully in control of how you navigate the situation beyond the professional. The OP replies, I do ask customers about the kind of cake they want, so there is a lot of interaction. I could ask her to only contact me through email if she has any reference cake, or any inquiry, and only physically contact if necessary. Her making this request definitely seems like a way for her to sneak back into your life. There definitely seems like there's ulterior motives here. What do you think? Update from the OP's comments. I totally forgot about this post. A lot of people have been asking what I had decided. Sorry to disappoint you guys, I accepted the order. It looked too good to pass it to someone else. Call me a greed businesswoman all you want, but like you said, ask for advance payment. I did ask for it. They paid in advance. I always asked for advance full payment. I also minimized the contacts with my ex-best friend. So far the interaction between us has been through email and also have an assistant who is a family friend. He knows my situation and is a middleman. I am documenting everything. I know I'm taking a huge risk with this, but I'm willing to see where it goes. Also, I got to know hiring me was my ex-husband's idea, not hers. My ex heard about my service from a colleague of his and wanted to hire me. I haven't talked to my ex about this. Also, my communications has been with my ex-best friend. Nothing big happened. I'm still working on it. I will post a full update after all of this is done. Stay tuned. Nay, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. At the end of the day, it's business. New update 
11 March 2023. Hi guys, I've read your advice and suggestions. You all made some really good points, so I decided to talk to my mom about it. I just needed her insights about this matter. She told me I should do what I want to do. My boyfriend also encouraged me to take the order. He says that if I had to stay to organize the dessert table, he would be there for me. I took the order. And it turns out, it was my ex-husband's idea to hire me, because one of his colleagues recommended my services to him. And it was sort of short notice, so I had to rush this. Anyways, I kept it strictly about business. I did take the payment in advance, just like some of you mentioned. I always ask for an advance payments. I mostly maintain communication through email. I have an assistant who is a family friend of mine to handle all communications. My ex-best friend tried many times to meet with me in person, but I told her to just email me because I do have cake orders for other people too. I only had to meet her one time in person regarding the order. She sent me the details of the party over the email. And like I mentioned, it was a huge order. I didn't just have to make a birthday cake for the baby. It's a Pokemon theme. There were also cake pops, cupcakes, and macaroons. Luckily, I had my friend Maria over for some help. Yes, I did pay her. So, like usual, I wanted to deliver the cakes and other stuff for the party. There was already a table set at the venue. My boyfriend, Josh, 35 male, came with me to support me and keep me away from my ex-husband and ex-best friend as much as possible. As I was busy with myself, my ex approached me and said hello. Not gonna lie, seeing him after so many years my heart just stopped. This man has given me the worst pain he could possibly give to a Cuban. I'm glad I held my composure. I also said hello back. He tried to have a small talk with me by saying that he is sorry about how things went down and what he said. And also I looked better than the last time he saw me. Then he drops a big bomb. He said all these years, he has thought of me, wondering what I was doing, even though he was happy with his married life. I was silent. I didn't say a word. He just kept spewing that he misses me and my cooking. My homemade French onion soup is still his favorite. He misses that every time he gets sick with the flu. I didn't know what to say. At that moment, Josh noticed that my ex was making me uncomfortable, and he rushed towards me with a fake emergency. He asked if I was okay. I said yes. After the table said it was done, I was about to leave. That's when I saw my ex-father-in-law, along with other guests. He noticed me and came to give me a hug. My ex-father-in-law is a very humble man. In fact, he was the only man who was on my side when I was going through a divorce with his son. He looked really happy to see me and asked how I was. He started to chat with me. I talked to him about my business and he gave me some advice. He even talked to my boyfriend. He called Josh a pretty standard guy, whatever that means. Ex-father-in-law was nice and said he would suggest my services to his friends too. He insisted that I stay until lunch is served. I said no a couple of times, but he managed to convince me. I only stayed for one more hour or so, but I was fine. I did notice that my ex-best friend was eyeing me from the corner. I was fine because Josh was beside me the whole time. I chatted with some guests. They appreciated my service. I didn't have any more conversations with my ex. I didn't even stay for the cake cutting. I left the first chance I got, but my assistant stayed to make sure everything was fine and for the cleanup. It was overwhelming for me. I saw some of my old friends and my in-laws. My mother-in-law avoided me and some of my old friends just said hello. Later that day, I got a message from my ex-best friend on my work email that she liked my service and that her guests really liked my cakes and desserts. She also said sorry. That's not where it ends. I got to know from my friend Marie, who is still in contact with some of my old friend group, that my ex-best friend is not happy with her marriage. When my ex and her are in public, they would often fight a lot. They also fight on the day of their kid's birthday. To be honest, I just told her to not bring me the gossip about her. But the silver lining is I got a huge fat check. <laughs> I can finally buy a new sugar printer or maybe a good quality oven. Also, I just want to appreciate my boyfriend Josh. He's been incredibly supportive of me. He has protected me from my ex and my ex-best friend like a knight. I think he deserves his own cake from me. And I know a lot of you told me not to take it, but I guess I'm just a greedy Mr. Krabs who cares more about the money rather than being classy. <laughs> but this is the last time I will be taking any orders from them. I know they have a three-year-old daughter whose birthday will be in two months. I think they might try to hire me again. I will not take it if that happens. P.S. Yes, my ex-best friend did try to communicate with me during the party, but I managed to avoid it thanks to Josh and my ex-father-in-law. My ex-father-in-law knows about my situation and my discomfort with my ex-best friend. He kept me busy with small talk. The audacity to have the small talk and tell you that he misses you and your soup, OP, is hilarious. Your ex doesn't seem to be getting the attention that he wants from his own wife. Just proves, once a cheater, always a cheater. He definitely maintained that cheating mindset and the wandering eye. 
It's nice to know that you knocked it out of the park. That's a huge accomplishment. You've grown so much in the time that all of this happened. That's the best revenge. Way to go, Gi. What are your thoughts? Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lives where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there.